Hi guys, thanks for checking the video out. Steve Buzzer here, and this video is about when I played with Martin Keimer. So I was very fortunate to be invited by Sky Sports to go up to the British Masters. Played uh, with Martin Keimer, Peter Finch, and Seb on golf. So we had a great day. You know, that's a fantastic four ball. So yeah, we we're always going to have fun. But I, like I said, and I, thank you to the people that ant asked me some questions, you know, via the video I did last week or through my Twitter. So I'm going to answer a few of those now while showing you some of the shots that were played on our on our back nine. Um, if I haven't answered your question, and I, I tried to pick questions that were interlinked with a lot of other people's questions, but if this video doesn't answer your question and you would still like to know it, get some comments down below and I'll see if I can answer it there. So this question is from Adrian Canny, and I, I like this question. He said, did you notice the difference between you, Pete, and mine? And I did, yes. And interestingly, it was quite noticeable that Pete has been playing and I haven't. So even between the three of us, it was more of a consistency thing rather than Martin was, his ball striking was out of this world and so much better than us. I, I wouldn't say that is the difference between the likes of me and Pete and a tall player like Martin Keimer. But you could certainly see it in the consistency. And on the spectrum, unfortunately, I was at the bottom. I really haven't been playing a great deal because I've been busy doing my, doing my research. And it, somebody that's got a high ball speed like I do, if I'm hitting it slightly offline, it's gonna go a long way off. So you could see how uncomfortable I was. You could see Pete was comfortable. You know, he, he looked good out there. Martin actually started not the best, but he got into his round, and that's usually the sign of a tour player. Um, you know what it's like when, as your average person, maybe not playing all the time. When you start bad, it's sometimes hard to get yourself out of it. Martin, first two, three holes didn't look great. Still made some up and down, so it wasn't really hurting his score. And then kicked on and played some really good golf after that. So I would say it was more consistency rather than just pure ball striking. I'll do at least one later, I'm going to get the bag, okay? <laughs> 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 to be fair, you're the one to have the curve right, just... Yeah, the shot's there, the shot's there. Oh, nice. Is that short, that isn't it? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. No way I'm getting anywhere near that one. <laughs> You're gonna go through it on your next shot, aren't you? Yeah. Alright. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> You're going about that. Let's see how it's ball. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah swing. Beautiful. Perfect. What a man. Get one of those baby drawers I've been hearing about. Oh, he has as well. He likes it. How are we looking? Well played, mate. Shut Very nice. Well, thank you. Thin draw, my specialty. <laughs> so, this question is from David Fox, and he's asking Did I learn anything from watching Kaima? And um, I had another question as well about Kaima's caddy, and these two go together. It was very obvious when Kaima got to the tee, he, he wanted to know the distances to the trouble, wh whether that be bunkers, dog legs. Um, he trying to really work out what's happening before he picked the club. What I tend to do, and I think a lot of amateurs do the same, is they look at the yardage on the hole and go, oh, that's 450 yards, I'm definitely hitting driver. And I've, I sometimes make the decision before I've actually tried to make a decision. So I would say what I learned the most from watching Martin was that, like actually just wait a second, watch what's happening with the hole, get all your yardages and then make a decision. As soon as you've pulled that driver, 
it, you're going to just hit driver. You know, you, you might try and justify it, but you'll still hit it. I, I noticed that even though me and Martin hit it the same distance, there were a few occasions he would hit three wood, whereas I would already decide on driver. So that's a good question. Yeah, go. <laughs> I don't know what we're aiming at. Is that a good line? I think it's in the rough because they're all rough right. there, but I'm not going to lay up with the four, I think. I don't know what I've got. We need how many birdies to win? 30? I think you want to be for the left. I didn't really know. I didn't really know. I didn't really know. I didn't really know. Yes. I thought you were going to be for the left. That's a wide target. Right, hit that. Stop Probably should have made more than the birds and be helpful. Yeah. Mm. I mean, not anyway. Oh, So the next question is from Jonathan Lythe. I think I've said your name right. So good question. Did you demonstrate to Martin Keimer the buzz along technique? So a little <laughs> bit of sarcasm on that. But I was I was shocked that I wasn't hitting it past Keimer. I know he's a tour pro and he's won majors, but I thought the only thing I would do was be able to hit it past him. And he was kind of sneaky long. A lot of people talk about his cut and how he moves it from left to right and with the driver especially I wasn't seeing that so much. Quite a neutral flight, if anything from left to right, but really controlling his spin. He had quite a low spin profile and as a result he was able to hit it quite far. Um, into the wind that gave him a massive advantage over me because I can tend to overspin it slightly. But there were a few holes that I really did hit great shots and I was like, not that I was, didn't do it. Yeah, I, yeah you did. I didn't. Yeah, probably. Well, they're watching me walk down the fairway. But yeah, and I would get down there, and um, we were about the same. But I, there wasn't any distance between us either way. But I did, if I'm honest, think I would hit it past him. But yeah, he is. Uh, he's sneaky long. But again, he's he's a fit guy. I think sometimes people over go with the cut and go, well, if he's cutting it, he can't be hitting it that far. I mean, certainly not the case. And really good spin profile. So close house, quite windy. Um, he, he did lose a few early on to the right, but as he got into the round, real strong ball flight, really under control. You can see how he's done so well in the majors. I know how much my hands sweat. This <laughs> question is from Gary Mallison. So he's talking about Ian Poulter and I think he had a bit of a head off over the mobile phone. I think it went off and he got a bit angry. Uh, should they be banned? Um, no. I think in the modern in the modern day I think you have to be allowed to have your phones. It's such an inconvenience not to. You know, it'd probably be the difference between people coming and not. Um, I think so many people are social mediaing about the event as well. You know, the phones can only be a good thing. Um, saying that, the modern phone is so easy. Oh, I got Jimbo Jet. What's your opinions on this? Put it on silent, no issue. That's the thing is, you know, it's hard to police, but just yeah. I, I think that's where silent. the issue is. Just. Just put your phone on silent, and I don't think you've got a problem. You know, even if you like have to turn off vibrate, it's not the end of the world yeah, yeah. if someone 
can't get hold of you for five seconds. No, no, I, d I definitely agree. And ev even like with the taking of the pictures and stuff, like the modern phone doesn't have to make a sound. So again, I have no issues with that. Um, I was only there on the Wednesday and the crowds were so good and it could have only got better and better. I uh, watched the, the end of the stuff on the Sunday on the TV and the crowds just look brilliant. So um, it's hard to have a go at the crowds. I, I understand why Polters gets frustrated. Um, the players tend to get frustrated when it's like a noise so they can have thousands of people there and it it kind of the murmur sort of drowns out anything it's when you get like a specific noise out of the blue uh, hence the reason they hate the shutter of a camera so i understand why he's frustrated but yeah you you can't ban the phones i just don't see it's viable so yeah keep phones keep people going to watch oh, the event The way she teased it up with, with the club twirling, she oh, plays golf. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the teas are disturbing her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. You don't need a three wood, it's too much probably. and he said what's it like playing in front of a crowd our cameras a big distraction and I've always liked playing in front of a crowd and um, when I was an amateur um, like I used to play in like if it was a big event or uh, we used to have a big club event in Devon and used to get a lot of members come and look um, I used to like having people watching it used to help me focus and concentrate as a result I used to play better when I'm playing better I want people watching me so I, I found it was quite a nice cycle. Um, obviously when you're not playing well it's a bit different. Um, in terms of the cameras, um, as we do a lot of YouTube videos, the difference between playing on tour or doing a YouTube video is a tour player never has to deal with the camera. When we're filming we are either physically in charge of it, you know, filming someone else, or when we're playing we have to talk to the camera. That's a far bigger distraction than having a, a a crowd or b having like 
the cameras, the Sky TV cameras that were filming for that prime. So yeah, I I always find my own camera is more distracting. Um, I've kind of got used to it, so I can kind of put my focus in and out a little bit better. So that's probably actually maybe doesn't help my focus as much when I'm filming, but when I play in professional events away from filming, I found that can kind of help like really get into my pre-shot routine, really concentrate over the ball and then switch back off. So um, yeah, I've been quite lucky that I've trained that way, but yeah, a camera when I'm filming YouTube video is a far bigger distraction than like I say, playing with a crowd and, a, uh, and having cameras there. So good question. But uh, yeah, we're slightly different to your average average Joe because we're so used to having the camera when we're playing. And it's usually there more times than it's not because of how busy I am. I'm usually on the course, usually means I'm filming. Oh. Oh. Four You're right, four under. Let's go, man. See? Is that, is that the Each lowest one burning? The lowest you yeah, I've never played better than that. I mean, I've played with three amateurs or a couple of pros. <laughs> it was probably the best pro am the last 10 years. Yes. The best oh. score. Not I'm so much. I'm up. such a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thank you. Cheers, sir. Thank you, sir. Cheers, mate. 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 Thank you, sir. Good to be here. Thank you. No, I don't have your phone. Good to be here as well, mate. Cheers, mate. You too. Thank you. Just wander around. Yeah, thank you. Got Rob to do a bit of work for once. Oh yeah, we need a massive man, thank you. Cheers man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah.